to discuss something really personal with you guys. Something so personal, in fact, that it is a part of me. Something so personal that it's been causing a shitstorm in the comments sections of all my videos over the last few months. So personal that it's why I got bullied when I was younger. The subject is body hair. Or maybe I should say their lack of body hair. Because like so many women all around the world, I used to have a very strict shaving routine. Kind of on autopilot. I never really questioned why I'm shaving. I never really gave it that much thought. But I do know when it all started. I started questioning my body hair one very fateful day when I was about 10 or 11 years old. And I went into school and there was a girl there who looked me straight in the eye and she told me that I had a mustache. Yeah, I had like a bit of dark hair over my upper lip right here. I just found that so painful. <laughs> so painful that I couldn't get it out of my head. I thought there was something wrong with me, that I wasn't a real girl because I had a mustache, because I had some hair on my body. And apparently that wasn't acceptable. So I just remember going back home that day and within a few days I started waxing my upper lip. And uh, that was the beginning of my journey with hair. So today I want us to talk about why we shave. Oh yeah, and we'll also definitely, definitely talk about this. This has been pretty scandalous. But first, a little bit of background on Hair. A lot of our shaving habits today are the result of a massive marketing campaign by Gillette a short 100 years ago. But before we get into that story of corporate greed, let's go even further back. You are so hairy, you are literally all hair. My little hairy boy. Women and men have been removing their hair for thousands of years in various cultures, but not for the same reasons that we remove it today. In ancient Egypt, high-ranking women removed all their hair, including the hair on their very heads, except their eyebrows. In ancient Greece, the ruling classes also removed their hair, as this symbolized wealth and power. In Elizabethan England, wealthy women left their body hair intact, but removed their eyebrows, unlike the ancient Egyptians. Safe to say, hair removal trends have come and gone throughout history, but really only applied to the ruling classes, who had enough disposable time on their hands to get the job done. And if you look at religions, they all have different approaches. Sikhism forbids hair removal. In some branches of Islam, you're expected to remove your pubic hair. Buddhist monks usually shave their heads at some point in their lives. In fact, body hair has been used in many facets of society, especially as a way of distinguishing classes of people. Today, body hair and the removal of it isn't really seen in the same way. I mean, I wasn't shaving my legs to suggest I belong to the ruling class. Instead, I was shaving my legs because I felt like it was something that was expected of me. Something my female friends and family members did. And this is where things get pretty juicy. Do you remember our friend Gillette? Well, he was a very cunning businessman and he realized that if he could only get the other half of the population to shave, women, he could literally double double his profits, which were already enormous. And this is the story of how capitalism <laughs> is dictating our shaving habits today. So Gillette created the first razor that was targeted exclusively at women and it was in 14K gold plating and it was called Milady Decolette. Gillette, what a name. It was marketed as a beautiful addition to your dressing room table and it promised to help you out with an embarrassing personal problem. The razor was welcomed by women everywhere. By using such language, Gillette ensured that owning a razor was an essential part of the beauty routine of the times. And more importantly, that every woman was using it. So this is super important to note, the kind of language that was used, because at its core, that language really appealed to kind of our survival instincts as women. I mean, you don't wanna be the odd one out, do you? You surely wanna come across as taking good care of yourself, don't you? You should be like all the other women who are using this product right now. Keep in mind that up until the 20th century, the vast majority of women did not remove their body hair, apart from those high-class eyebrowless ladies, of course. What Gillette did by creating the first razor for women is they literally invented a new industry. They invented shaving for women. 
They made it up exclusively for profit to expand their market. Playing on women's insecurities has been a feature of modern advertising for decades. And, you know, all the beauty magazines and all the TV stations, everybody bought into this, telling women for the first time in history that they must absolutely shave their armpits and their legs and everything else. Apart from their heads, obviously, because you should have long hair as a, as a woman, shouldn't you? For women at the time, when dresses were getting shorter, sleeves becoming non-existent for the first time in fashion in a really long time, marketing by Gillette ensured that the mere idea of dancing with your arms up in the air at a party in a sleeveless dress was an experience that needed to be feared or cause anxiety unless your pits were perfectly shaved. At the time, this kind of advertising by Gillette seemed to promise women that if they shaved, they would be seen as attractive and dainty and lovely to men. If not, they would be considered unattractive and even worse, unhygienic. Which you could definitely see as a cause of existential dread, especially in a time when women you know, weren't allowed to vote, they couldn't get jobs easily, and basically needed men in order to survive. So a hairless woman was considered a superior woman. By shaving, you could quite literally attract a man and secure your financial future. While researching this video, I came across a lot of really, really interesting statistics. And one of them said that women who wax their bodies end up spending about $30,000 over the course of their lifetime on waxing. Whereas women who shave using razors spend about $8,000 and eight weeks of their lives. Eight weeks of their lives just shaving. It's kind of mind blowing if you think about it. Gillette, you did well, didn't you? You did very, very well. And women shave for so many different reasons. Some of us shave because we don't like the look of body hair. Some of us shave because we feel that hair is smelly or unhygienic. By the way, it's not. It's really, really not, but we'll get there. Other people may shave because they worry about how other people might see them or because their partner wants them to shave. There are just so many different reasons why we shave and I will be the first one to admit, despite deciding not to shave my armpits anymore, I did shave my legs the other day after not shaving them for six months. But I think the general consensus is in most societies that if you don't shave, that means you're unhygienic and probably weird and maybe just a hairy feminist. Do you remember when back in the 90s, Julia Roberts went to the premiere of Notting Hill with hairy armpits? It was radical. This huge Hollywood celebrity at the height of fame seemed to be defying all beauty standards. A woman who doesn't shave her armpits? Unthinkable. Just take a look at the women in all the magazines, in all TV ads, in fact, all of TV, all of media, all of Hollywood. It would be a real struggle to find any women who have any semblance of body hair. Even ads for razors and like waxing strips, the women in those ads do not have any hair to start with. What the hell are they shaving? Your smooth, sexy Venus leg. So with Venus, let's get your goddess shown. Venus. So of course, in a world that glamorizes the naked hairless body, who would even want to stick out and be hairy? I mean, people would just stare at you and make fun of you, as they have been doing in my videos. Ever since I stopped shaving my armpit hair and started showing it, in my videos, you know, pretty openly, I've been getting so many comments from both men and women literally telling me to shave my armpit hair. Literally, these are adults sitting on the other side of the screen watching my videos and all they're getting out of my videos is that I have armpit hair and telling me that I should shave it. <laughs> So entrenched is this idea that women must shave their bodies that people will actually tell you what to do with your own body from halfway across the world. Now, come and follow my train of thought for a second. All the women that we see in pretty much all media are hairless. Men are not. Granted, there is definitely some pressure for men to shave their faces, you know, their beards and stuff and keep that area trim, but I'm not sure if the pressure really compares to, you know, the excruciating lens that women have to go to in order to remove all the hair from 
their entire bodies. So let's take a look at that double standard for a second. Men with armpit hair are pretty unremarkable, right? I mean, it's just something that we take for granted. We don't necessarily consider them very unhygienic or smelly or weird or odd. They just have hair. They also have hair on their legs and usually their arms. And you know, it's kind of normal. Nobody really bats an eyelid. But for women, the standard changes pretty much immediately. If a woman has hair on her legs, she is considered unhygienic. Probably doesn't take care of herself, you know? If she has armpit hair, she is considered unhygienic. And I think a lot of women believe that if they have armpit hair, it's gonna be smelly and gross and dirty. What is the difference between a man having armpit hair and a woman having armpit hair, apart from it's part of our modern culture? There is no biological or physiological difference between the two. And this is exactly why I decided to grow these babies out. <laughs> now, some people might find that disgusting. I'm totally fine with that. Other people might find it really cool and radical. I'm fine with that too. Whatever, I don't particularly care. The reason why I stopped shaving my armpit hair about six months ago was really because I wanted to see what it's like to even have armpit hair. Like, I never had armpit hair. Like, the moment it started growing, it was out. It was cut with a razor, it was done. It was never coming back. <laughs> that is literally what happened. I never had armpit hair. And if you're a woman, chances are you've also never had armpit hair. So knowing what that even feels like <laughs> was actually just felt like such a radical thing to do. So at first I thought that it might be smelly. You know, I thought that it might not smell good, that it might make me more sweaty, that it'll just look horrible and that everybody will stare at me and that I will no longer look like a woman. Instead, what happened was something very different. It was never smelly. <laughs> it was never sweaty. In fact, I feel like my armpits actually smell better with the hair in them. Nobody stared at me, not even once in real life. Nobody ever said anything, not even once in their life. If anything, people actually complimented me on my boldness to grow out my armpit hair, which I just found so funny because it is literally something that naturally grows on you and we go to great lengths to remove it. No sweat, no weird smells, no weird comments, just, you know, an avalanche of keyboard warriors on YouTube, but that's easy enough to ignore. Body hair is not unhygienic. What can be unhygienic is not washing, and that is what can cause bad smells, regardless of whether you shave or not. And look, I know that I just made that sound really simple, like it's just a matter of your own free will. I do appreciate that the matter is not quite as straightforward. There are women out there who have to shave for various different reasons, you know, in order to keep up their social position, in order to even retain their jobs or even stay in their romantic relationships. There's so many reasons why someone might shave or quite simply because they like the look of silky smooth, hairless limbs, which I totally understand. And I'm going to be honest with you that I still do wax that frickin' upper lip. Not as obsessively anymore as I once did. I used to do it on a weekly basis. Now I'm kind of just like, I forget about it and then I remember and then I just kind of like wax it again. But I still do it because I feel like that childhood trauma, that experience of being bullied about my body hair stayed with me for a really, really long time. So there's so many reasons why someone might shave and I still do. I think my point is that I now know that a huge part of why we shave has been dictated by corporate marketing at the beginning of the 20th century. I now know that hair does not make you smelly or unhygienic. I now know that I love my body just the way it is and if a future partner or boyfriend had a problem with my body hair, I am now secure enough in myself to tell him to f off. <laughs> Look, I know that shaving isn't going anywhere and people are going to continue to remove their hair. In fact, the women's shaving market is set to rise by like 5% in the next five years. So it's continuously growing. But what I would love to see one day is a world where not shaving 
is completely unremarkable. <laughs> Where I don't have to read comments on YouTube from people telling me to shave my armpits. Where you and I don't think about doing this in public with unshaved pits, you know? I would love to see a world where it is just what it is and nobody pays any attention to it. That is my hope. <laughs> okay, the camera literally just overheated. I had to turn it off and it got dark. So hang on, the light's gonna change quite significantly. Okay, okay, here with the, uh, the last words of this video. <laughs> Look, at the end of the day, it is your body and your body only if you want to shave for whatever reason that's cool if for whatever reason you don't want to shave that's also cool if anything i just hope that through this video i got to communicate the other side of the story the side that we don't really often talk about if you've come out of this video thinking hmm i wouldn't mind trying this thing out join me join me on this challenge i will continue not shaving my armpit hair for the foreseeable future if you want to give it a shot for two months it's winter now so you know it's a pretty good time to just give it a try please let me know in the comments below i would love 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 to hear from you and yeah just see how it goes see how it feels who knows maybe you'll like it and just remember nobody cares anywhere near as much as you think they do as for me, I will definitely continue to try and normalize armpit hair. Now, I still have a couple of dramatic childhood experiences to process in all of this. So for now, I'm just trying to become totally okay with hair in other places. And I think one day I'll reach a point where none of it will bother me anymore.